Hey folks, Chris Atti here, director of the San Diego Bus Retreat Center. Thanks for popping in to watch this fun Friday video with us. Today what we have for you is we're going to celebrate the virtual feast together. You're probably asking yourself, what does that even mean? Well, in the Orthodox Church today, the feast day is of the Zogothos Pii, the life-giving font. And here at the retreat center, our chapel is actually named Zogothos Pii. One interesting thing about this is that our feast day is always celebrated on the same day every year, but not the same date. Why? Well, Zogothos P is always celebrated the Friday following Pascha, following Easter. And since the date of Easter changes, it means that the day, date of our feast day changes, but the day never does. It's always Friday after Easter. And so, what we're going to do today is even though we're experiencing a pandemic and we can't be together doing what we would normally do which is to come here celebrate liturgy together and then go and have a beautiful feast we're going to spend some of the highlights of the day together normally what would happen is all the staff would come up the night before and we would set up and we would get ready for everybody coming the next day and then at the end of the night we would all decorate the icon together of course, it would take way too long, we would be up way too late, we would be a little bit tired, but we would have been filled with joy and laughter from spending time with each other and getting ready to have all of our family and friends here the next day. And so it's one of the highlights of the year. And though we can't do it together this year, we're gonna do it virtually with you. What we're gonna do, because we can't just go to the store and buy flowers this year, we're actually gonna spend time together out in the woods harvesting and foraging for everything that we're gonna need to decorate the icon to get ready to celebrate our feast tomorrow with you. So, let's get going. So here we are, we're actually across the street from the retreat center. This is our neighbor's property and we do have permission to be here, but we came over here to get two things specifically that they said we can use. So, the two things are squill and daffodils. Squill and daffodils both grow in Wisconsin, though they're not native to Wisconsin. What I'm super excited about here is you can see the squill is a very bright blue. And so it's going to be perfect for the outer layer of our icon because blue is the color of in the Orthodox Church of the Panagia, the Theotokos, the Mother of God. And so it's going to be really nice that we can put this on the outside and have this nice popping color. So let's get harvesting. Okay, while we were up here across the street at our neighbors, which by the way, I didn't show you this. This is the daffodil that we picked. So this is the other flower that's not native to Wisconsin, but our neighbors said, hey, we've got some, you're welcome to have it, which we appreciate that from them very much. They're always kind of willing to lend us a hand or a flower whenever we need it. So thanks guys. But while we're up here, I figured we'd stop at the farmhouse. This is where I actually live. You can hear Jackson in the background. He really wants to get out here and play with you guys. But. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of these yellow flowers from this, it's called a forsythia bush. And what's interesting about it is again, it's not something that necessarily is native to Wisconsin, it's more ornamental. However, what I did learn is that it shares the same family tree as an olive tree. And so I think it's kind of cool because olives are a major thing in our culture and stuff that we have something, you know, kind of related to our homeland here, which is nice. So we're gonna pick a few of these flowers and then head out into the woods. All right, so when you decorate an icon, you do it in layers. And usually your bottom layer is a bunch of leafy greenery, such as leather leaf or something like that. Because leather leaf doesn't naturally grow here in Wisconsin or in our forest, what we're gonna do instead on our lower level is we're gonna take moss. And moss actually comes up in big mats like this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna make it the bottom layer of our, of our icon. And then we'll add some other greenery to it, such as some of these brushes and shrubberies and things that we find once we get out further into the woods. Okay, so here we are, we're actually right behind the cottages that a lot of you stay in when you come to the retreat center. And what we're here to pick is we're here to pick trout lilies, more specifically dog tooth trout lilies. So there's two varieties of trout lilies. We have a white and a yellow. Actually here we only have the white. They're called dog tooth because the flowers, the teeth or the petals of the flowers actually look like dog teeth. Additionally, it's called a trout lily because the leaf itself takes on the same pattern as a trout, a brown trout specifically. So here we are, we're actually on the trail that's the most west of our property. And so this is pretty much our property line. St. George and St. Athanasios are right here around us. Um, and what I'm here to show you is actually this flower here that you may or may not notice. 
It's called blood root and it grows all along this trail and it's absolutely beautiful. Right now you'll see that the, the flowers are actually closed. That's because this flower in particular opens with sun. Of course today it's not very sunny, it's rainy, it's a little cold. So not only are the flowers closed, but you see how these petal or these leaves are wrapped around them. That's to help create warmth for the flower. Um, the interesting thing, as I mentioned before, it's called bloodroot. The reason is this flower actually lacks, lacks nectar. And so once it opens, the petals tend to fall off. That's why you see all these here on the ground. But also it has this really thick, almost sap inside of it. And so this is used not only for medicinal purposes, it's also a natural mosquito pellet and a dye. Because once it gets on your hands, it kind of doesn't go off. We're actually on the North Trail. So just to the east of us is St. Constantine and Helen, and to the west of us is St. Amalia. And what I'm here to show you is probably the thing that I'm most excited about. It's this little flower here. And so this is called Dutchman's Breeches. And I think you can tell why, because each individual flower looks like a little pair of pants, a little pair of breeches. It's so awesome. It's unbelievable that we have this flower in particular growing here at the St. Iacovos Retreat Center in such a plethora because it's hard to find in the wild. Although it is native to Wisconsin, it doesn't just grow like this anywhere. And so this whole trail is actually covered in it. We're just off the beaten path a little bit. So you have to really look for it. Um, one other thing that I think is really great about this flower is that although its common name is Dutchman's Breeches, its genus name, genus name is Dicentia, which comes from the Greek word for two-spurred, because as you can see, each individual flower has two little spurs coming off of it, as well as looking like a little pair of pants. We're right along the road that leads into the retreat center, and all along this road, what you find is it's called cut leaf toothwort cut leaf because you can tell the shape of the, the leaves here, and then tooth because of the flower, and wart actually just means common. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop here and walk all along and harvest a lot of this because this is gonna be the outside layer of our icon when we decorate. All right, so here we are um, in steps one and two. So we're gonna show you step one on the smaller icon and then step two on the larger icon. So first we put our base layer down, which does have that different moss that we pointed out, some of the onion grass, some of the wild leeks, as well as some of the angelica root. And so that's gonna be our base layer. And then when you move over here to step two, you see the next step is to actually start bunching your smallest flowers together to kind of be your base. And so what we have here is we have our Dutchman's breeches as well as our cut tooth leaf board that we're putting into little bunches and we're gonna place all around the icon. Okay, so here we are again. And what we've done after our base layer as well as our filler flowers, we've started to apply our most vibrant flowers which are gonna draw the most attention, which are gonna be the daffodil and the squill. So there's gonna be a lot of work here where we just kind of fill this in all the way around on both of our icons. All right, guys, here we go. Here's all your hard work. We've got our small icon for venerating as well as our large icon that we're going to hang in the chapel that you can see are completely decorated with everything that we found here at the St. Iacobus Retreat Center. So thank you very much for your help. Well, as you can see, here we are in the beautiful Zobobos PE Chapel. We have our smaller icon and our larger icon, and we're ready to celebrate liturgy. We're going to have a beautiful day. We're going to be missing you a lot. However, you will be in our thoughts and prayers. Please remember the St. Iacobus Retreat Center and its staff in your thoughts and prayers as well. Additionally, if you're able to, consider supporting us financially. As of right now, we're unable to host retreats and guests, so any support given will go to maintaining the facilities through the staff. To make a contribution, just head to our website or utilize our mailing address. Well, friends, that's it from all of us. Please stay healthy, stay safe, which means staying six feet apart. Don't forget to pray, and most importantly, stay home.